Hey there, hi there, ho there, how are you? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're still okay. Black Lives Matter. And yeah, let's get into this. Um, I decided to do something a little bit fun for myself. And, uh, I found a random, well, not so much random, but I found a Bob Ross painting, uh, video. And I just wanted to follow along because, one, it was a time last week, and then two, uh, I just wanted to do something different. And one of those things is bringing out my watercolors. So for this one, uh, I, like Bob Ross, invite you to join me, break out any colors that you really enjoy, uh, and paint or color or draw with me. You could use crayons, you could use pastels, you could use anything. Uh, pause this video. Uh, I'm going to link the one that I'm doing in the description and we could just have a painting party and I think that would be really fun. <laughs> so uh, one thing too, I didn't have oil colors or oil paints, oil colors. I don't have oil paints. Uh, I have a couple but I don't really have a good setup for oil paint. My room is not well ventilated and I wouldn't be able to have like the paint thinner slash turpentine to in my room and I wouldn't feel comfortable with that because also my cat is in here and I don't want to do that to her. I uh, <laughs> care more about her than my own safety but uh, yeah I had to also replace a couple colors because the stuff that I was using was a combination of Artist Loft and Reeves and some gouache and then some of my old college watercolors and uh, those were, I believe, Windsor Mutant, Windsor Mutant, <laughs> Windsor Newton, or Cotman. Uh, honestly, I could have gotten away with mostly just the artist's loft and then replaced a certain couple colors with similar colors. I did have to replace, I believe, he calls it an Indian yellow. I don't know exactly what that is, but it's somewhere in between the cadmium yellow and the yellow ochre. Uh, the only thing I really had was a cadmium orange, and that's still not even really right, so... I also didn't have a dark umber, I believe, or is it a dark sepia? No, it's a dark sienna. I didn't have that. I used a dark umber and it worked pretty, pretty well. Uh, luckily I did have a sap green and an alizarin red and I'll talk a little bit about color later on in this video, but I think one of the reasons, uh, if you're curious, uh, the reason why like Thursday I was just like, ah, ha, ha, it's not great. Um, I mentioned it in my description for Friday's video, but, uh, Thursday, uh, Jenna, uh, Jenna, I haven't, okay, preface this, I haven't actually been watching Jenna Marbles for that long, really is only in the last year or so that I started really watching her videos, but I've been binging them a lot lately and they're just, they just legitimately bring me joy because they're so funny and goofy and wholesome, at least the stuff that she makes nowadays, because I really love her dogs, they're really sweet, and Bunny's a great horse, and I love Weech, and I love uh, Saramit, and I love Marbles. Uh, so that video, it, it sucks because, like, I'm going to miss her, and she's one of my favorite YouTubers just because a lot of her stuff is just so wholesome, it's so genuine, it just feels good to watch her stuff. I don't feel guilty about watching things, but uh, I also appreciate that she's holding herself accountable, that she's doing something that she really feels important to do, and to, like, even though actions do speak louder than words and she hasn't done certain things, in years, I think it's still great that she wants to also hold herself accountable for all that. And I think, like, that's one of the greatest things about her is that even though, like, she isn't going to be on, she, like, she privated so many of her videos and she just, she does, she feels genuine. And I know that, like, I don't know her, and she talks a little bit about that, but I feel like she does mean it when she says that she doesn't want to hurt anybody, she just wants to make content to make people 
smile and to laugh and to be happy. So, if anything, like, I know she'd never watch any of my videos, but, um, I really appreciate that about her. And, like, I just thank her for doing all that kind of stuff. And I thank her for, uh, standing up and saying something important. Because I feel like she's so awesome and amazing and not necessarily unproblematic but like genuine that's that's my thing with her <laughs> and that's why i like watching her videos and like i can't accept all the apologies i could accept if anything the the one about the asian one but i i remember also like she said it came out 2011 2012 there was a video around that time I remember it because it was around the time that I graduated from high school and I went to this Asian coalition thing for like going to college and stuff like right before I went to ASU uh, she or there was a video called Asians in the library and it's it's just a bad video <laughs> honestly but that was kind of the humor and it doesn't excuse it like I but I kind of get where it came from, I guess. So, there's that. Anyway, let's get back into this painting. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, y'all are still painting with me, or I don't know if you're- if you aren't, it's okay. Uh, I would encourage you to break out some colors, because it's fun. But, uh, <laughs> you'll see I'm starting to get into parts where I just cannot do the same things that you can do with oil paints, because I'm working <laughs> with watercolors. Um, one of the things is, that with watercolor, if you want to make things lighter, you don't usually use white, you use less color and more water. <laughs> a lot of the white that you'll get in watercolor sets is typically a gouache. Uh, I think, I believe, wa I'm, I need to actually refresh myself on specific details when it comes to watercolor, but I believe gouache is more of a, like, opaque kind of thing. It's a opaque or it's a more opaque paint. It still can be watered down with white, but you typically use it as like kind of a topper on things. So that's a thing. And this fan brush is too big for what I wanted to do. <laughs> I think maybe one day if I could, I would love to get like oil paints and stuff like that, but they're expensive. And I already have these watercolors from college. So and these brushes. Um I actually really love doing the trees the way that he shows you. Thing is, I had to use a different paintbrush. Um, you'll see it. I usually, I basically use the same paintbrush for the majority of this, but it. I also tend to do that. It's good to switch out your brushes, but sometimes you just have a tool that you prefer more than others. And this is too red a red. <laughs> uh, I prefer typically is mixing phthalo green and alizarin red because it has a cooler black, but I really do like the sap green with the alizarin red too. It c came out with a nice shade of brown. I agree, it's a nice shade. Uh, alizarin red is one of the best colors to mix to create um, darker colors when it comes to watercolor. At least I feel like it's a cooler red and I just really appreciate that kind of thing. That I think that needed to have more green in it. <laughs> Oops, it's okay. I'm actually watching this as you are watching this or listening to this, so it, you're seeing this in real time because I'm wanting to paint with y'all. <laughs> uh, anyway, what else was there? I was gonna talk about like color theory and stuff like that, but I don't know. You'll see that like this doesn't match really as much um, what Bob Ross made, and that's okay because one of the things that I really appreciate about him is that you're creating your own little world, you're creating your own little landscape and you get to put what you want in there. You can put a little, you can put a bush if you want to put that bush. You don't have to put the bush. If you want to move on and wait and wait until you get to the next part, then you can just do that. It's fine. It's cool. And uh, I also tried to use a palette knife with this because that's one of the things I've always wanted to do. I do want to kind of break out some at least acrylic colors at some point, but as you can see, uh, one, my palette was too small to really use the palette knife that I was using. I do have a smaller one. I don't know why I didn't use the smaller one. I should have. <laughs> but, uh, I couldn't get the same look, and I think that's, like, the only thing that I regret in this painting. And I mean, like, it's an exercise, so 
it's totally cool. It doesn't have to be perfect. I ended up kind of liking it because it has a very fantastical kind of vibe to it. It looks very fake, but I also really like how fake it looks. It looks, it makes me think of The Wizard of Oz, uh, the City of Green, or Emerald City, <laughs> City of Green, Emerald City, but a warmer version of it. So, like, uh, the desert version, which is hilarious, I guess, now that I say that, just because I do live in a desert. And I started to fall behind at this point, so I was just like, well, screw it, I'm gonna, gonna drop the palette knife and continue painting, because, you know, I like painting more. <laughs> Not that the palette knife thing isn't painting, it's just a different kind of painting, and it's also not really possible with watercolors. I mean, it is probably, but... Um, oh, side note, you'll notice that this is taped down, right? Um, one of the reasons is because, as you can see, water warps. Even if it is a pre-stretched fab er, fabric, pre-stretched um, paper, and you usually want to actually submerge it in water for a while, and then take it out and then tape it down with specific watercolor tape. However, I do not have that opportunity, so instead what I had done was just wet the entire paper uh, and just continue from there so that things would blend a lot more easily. Uh, the paint or the paper that I used specifically was a hot press. I prefer cold press and uh, <laughs> I know that sounds like all bougie and stuff, but the difference is the smoothness of the paper itself. Hot press, it's kind of like you're taking an iron and smoothing out the paper versus with a cold press, you just kind of press it and you don't really smooth it out. So this paper actually doesn't have a lot of tooth to it. Uh, you get a lot more texture and you get a lot more... The, the absorption of the paper is different and uh, I feel like you get more of a natural look? I don't know. I just preferred cold press when I was in college because it did. I like the feeling of it too. I like the feeling of paper. Uh, I like the feeling of paint on paper. I know you're not supposed to do that, but it's my own stuff, so it's fine. So yeah, uh, I think at this point I'm mixing up some colors and trying to... Yep, I'm, gonna, I'm mixing up that little green that he has on his. And at this point, I had run out of sap green. I should have squeezed out more, but you know, it's fine. I'm wondering what he does with all that extra paint too at the end of the videos because he always has so much left over. Uh, I know that you can just place, like you can put it, set it to the side and cover it with like saran wrap or something like that, or you can cover it and it'll last for a long time. It's what we had to use in, it's what we did in college. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know what else to say in this. I think I've said a lot. Um, I talked a little bit about, uh, colors. Okay, so side note, one of the things that I really do love about watercolor is mixing your own shades of, um, to mix your own shade of black, if you use the black in the tube, usually it's a Chinese... No, that's the Chinese white. Um, it's a different shade of black. I don't think it's midnight black because it's usually for acrylics. But if you use it out of the tube, it's difficult to get the vibrancy that you typically get with watercolor. So for the most part, a lot of art watercolor artists mix their own black. I prefer using uh, phthalo green and alizarin red. It makes a very cool black. But I, I kind of really like the sap green and alizarin red. Um, I feel like alizarin red actually makes some of the best shades of black. At least like the more true shades. Because it feels a lot more natural. And honestly, I freaking love this tree. Like, I know that it's a little, it's a little too, like, it's a little much. You can't see the difference between the various, the, like, two trees that I did. But I really like how it turned out. It, like, it, they just stand out more. Uh, I should have gone in and like taken, like lifted some of the paint off or some of the water off too, but that's okay. It's okay. I still really like how it turned out. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was talking about paint. Uh, so another thing too is if you're mixing, if you have like premixed colors, for watercolor, uh, what I had originally in my 
our class was a warm and cool of all the colors except or a warm and cool of all the primary colors and then a warm brown and a cool brown and that's pretty much all we had so and then the secondary colors because it is a pain to constantly have to mix your own secondary colors you do have to be picky about your secondary colors too i used a lot of thalo green in college like i said uh i didn't use as much sap green but we used i can't remember what the other blue was i had a warm blue and a cool blue a warm red a cool bread cool bread cool red and then a warm yellow and a cool yellow the cooler yellows are a little bit more on the brown side so it's like a yellow ochre and the the warmer yellows are like cadmiums the laser yellows that kind of stuff i didn't use them as much uh, i really used a lot of reds and a lot of blues in my paintings if i ever used them and here's me trying to use a palette knife on a too big palette knife on a too small canvas <laughs> it's fine and yeah uh to make your own shades black sorry that's what i was talking about you use complementary colors uh for me i always got the best with using red and green just because usually the greens are a little bit more balanced in the color and if you use a cooler red uh, it'll typically come out a little bit more closer to the shade you want. If you use like an orange and a blue, it can be a little bit warmer. Uh, I prefer cool colors, so that's just me. And then if you use a yellow and a purple, it's a lot more difficult. I feel you'll typically get more of a sepia, just because yellow is such a weak pigment. And purple can always- it typically overwhelms the yellow, so you're ending up using a lot more yellow and a very small amount of purple just to get the right color that you're looking for. But you can come up with some really pretty shades of brown and black, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> me trying to show off my little cabin in the woods. I feel like there's one- I can't remember- man, I used to actually know artists and stuff like that. Um, there's this one, there's a lot of American landscape artists like in the early night, early not 1900s, like the early 18th century. I want to say I could be wrong. I haven't taken art history in a couple of years. I want to go back, but uh, a lot of them used kind of like there's landscape was a character. It would have uh, people and stuff. Or not people it would it would represent feelings and like it, there's this whole thing about like wooden stumps and i can't remember the artist's name but he would do he would have like wooden stumps this is just like you could see it in the foreground and it would be like the destruction of nature and all that jazz and it's really interesting <laughs> uh, it landscape portraiture is pretty interesting uh one of my favorites actually is it's not really one of my favorites, but it's a really kind of interesting thing when artists would paint mountains back then. A lot of times they would create like the, the portrait of a person out of those things. So one of my favorites is uh, Washington's funeral, I think. I can't remember what it's called, but there's a painting of Washington's funeral place in Vermont or whatever. I think it's Vermont. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I remember. American history well. <laughs> Me as a Hamilton fan. Uh, there's a painting where you can see, if you look into, if you look at the mountains in the background, it's actually a portrait of Washington laying down. It's, it's super symbolic, but it's a really, it's one of those things where you, if you start to see it, you will never unsee it. And it's not one of those things where it's just like, oh, well, that kind of looks like a face. No, it is purposely done. <laughs> it's it's fun. I love, I miss art history. It's really interesting. I kind of want to do some stuff on art history on this channel at some point. It'll take a lot more editing. I know I keep on saying, I want to do this, I want to do that. But I haven't done it yet because I'm also very tired a lot of times. But... Uh, I think I might invest in getting just like a simple editing program that's not uh, video pad because 
it takes so long to do edits and it's not just because of my computer it is 90 percent because of the program because i have used other programs on my computer and it doesn't kill my computer as badly as videopad does uh so there's there's that oh hey look i'm trying to lift some of the paper with my gross uh, my gross towel. I try to use a towel, uh, or like not a towel, a rag, because if I, because the what the one to uh, toilet paper, paper towels, uh, they eventually will not be able to absorb any more water. But also, if you use a rag, you know you can reuse it, you can wash it, and honestly, you could just dab, dab, dab. It's cool. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh yeah, and here's the the tree. Oh, oh, oh. It's a nice tree. Good job. Oh, that's a that's a janky tree. Oh, that's a very janky tree. I like it. Like it. Love it. I have a thinner brush. I don't know why I didn't use a thinner brush on that part. Oh wait, no, I do. I did. I did. I did. I did. I think I grabbed Yep. Yep. Grabbed the wrong brush. I shouldn't have used that one. Don't don't use that one. Don't use that one. You know you have a smaller one. Come on, show me the brush. Come on, show me the brush. Come on, show me the brush. You got this. You got this, Chotch. Do it. There you go. There it is. <laughs> Alright. Um, I think this painting is nearing its end because I remember this being part of the end of things. Uh, thanks for... Uh, I, I gotta go respond to some comments because I'm really bad at doing that same day. I tend to wait a little bit because... Uh, I don't know, I'm weird like that. It's not really that weird, but I do read every comment and like I think it's I hope people really recognize it. Uh I Wow, I'm very tired. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of just quiet. Uh and you know what? If you're watching Bob Ross while you're doing this, that's cool too. So anyway, oh man, I love I love that I love having that like little bits of darker shades and all that jazz in this man it just looks so nice <laughs> uh that one part i don't like that one branch because it's too clustered together it looks fake <laughs> it's okay that's fine well i'm thinking friday is gonna be another typical speed paint a little bit classic uh i don't know if i'll have time to work on other stuff i'm I'm in this weird realm of like, oh yes, I need to work on my na 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 na, but then I got distracted. I get very distracted. And admittedly, I do kind of want to just play some games at some point, and I'll do that. I'm, I got the itchy, yeah, the itchio bundle, so that's a lot of games. It's a very lot of games. So there's that. Alright, as this is coming to an end, I really do hope that y'all are having a good day. Um, if you haven't, uh, I try, I haven't updated my, um, Black Lives Matter video recently. Uh, it was last updated last week sometime, but I do have different links in the description. I don't make any money on these videos because I'm not monetized or anything like that, so there's all that, uh, just as a note. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's, I think that's really it. I'm gonna post uh, at the end of this. You'll see like the full painting of this, and uh, hopefully that that it looks as good. Um, <laughs> I taped this very crookedly, so uh, the bottom part is a little crooked, but that's okay. It still looks nice, and I like it. It's a nice painting. Uh, I'm kind of thinking of doing some more watercolors, and if y'all like this, I could do another one of these, and or and we could just paint together, or maybe. If I can figure out a good way, I could live stream. So, with that, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time.